Okay, so I absolutely loved this chapter of Attack on Titan. I have not really read into anybody else's reviews. I've seen people on Twitter saying how much they hate it, so I was curious of what I would find. While reading through the chapter, I had so many different moments that I just thought, I was just looking at the page and just thought, yes, yes, this is exactly what needs to happen. This is exactly what the story has been building to. So this is just my quick review. Um, obviously... I enjoyed the chapter, so if you want to hear a rant about hating on the chapter, you're not going to get that in this video. Also, I'm not one of those fans that just blindly loves everything about a series that he likes. In fact, if you go back and watch my original like reviews of Attack on Titan when I first started reading the series, I had a lot of criticisms about it. I had a lot of things that I thought didn't work. I had a lot of things that I didn't particularly like about the series, and as the series went on, I grew to like it more and more. I thought it got better as as it went on within the story. So I'm not just some sort of blind fanboy just loving it because it's Attack on Titan. Actually, out of all the series that I've reviewed on this channel, I've had probably the most amount of gripes with Attack on Titan. But Chapter 138 is not one of them. So let's get into it. I'm just going to share my thoughts about the chapter. The first thing, if we're getting into a summary, is like the very first page, right? I'm not going to go page by page, but I'm just going to talk about the things that kind of stood out to me. This probably was not the intention of the page, but this is how I read it when I was reading it. The page starts out with the close-up image of a baby's face, then it pulls back and we see the adults, and then it pulls back even further and we see the titans. And to me, I was looking at this page as symbolism of sort of the innocence of a child, how you're born without hatred and how you're born without, I mean, you're born selfish, right? That's, that's a thing that we all go through as humans, but you're not born with this sort of like inherent prejudice against somebody else. It's something that's learned to you. And so like it begins with the innocence of the child and then it pulls back and we see the adults, you know, these Marleyans, these people that have been grown and indoctrinated to hate this other group of people from across the world. And then it pulls back and we see the Titans and we see the ultimate result and causality of what that hatred ultimately brought, which was almost the destruction of the entire planet. So I know that might seem really stupid. I might be reaching. I don't know. But I love this first page because I felt like it symbolized everything that Attack on Titan is about. Now, afterwards, we get a little bit of a recap with all the characters kind of gathering together. We get some nice reuniting moments. Annie finally finds her father. Peek is with her father. Also, Peek can call me daddy anytime if she wants to. And we get a lot of great moments with the characters sort of together. Jean and um and connie kind of had their little moment together gabby is there also so it's this kind of nice sort of regrouping moment before the chaos begins again and that chaos begins again when we see that both Reiner and Armin are okay again. They're walking forward. Reiner is just beat to hell like he always is. My boy always getting his ass kicked. And of course, from behind them, we see that Aaron is not dead yet. Um, he has still survived. And he sort of has created a like combination between his attack titan and colossus titan form. Like still being able to use the founding titan powers. Um, which is curious to me, again, I'm a little, I might be a little lacking here on the Attack on Titan lore because I'm not sure what the connection of sort of the tentacle creature would have to do with the powers of the Titan and since they're separated and yet Eren still seems to have, um, unique Titan abilities. Someone explain that to me because that's, that's the part I didn't understand. But anyways, the tentacle creature is going towards, um, all of these humans, all these civilians, all these Eldians, and is literally releasing the same kind of gas, the same, same uh, spinal fluid uh, gas that came from Zeke, and, like, creates its own army of thousands of titans, which was crazy, which was awesome. I loved it. And uh, the little, like, the tentacle snake creature thing, I don't know if that's something that a lot of fans get upset about or not, but I think it makes sense because um, whether or not this creature came from whatever origins that you want to give it, whether you want to say it came from deep within the earth, it's an ancient god of some sort, or a piece of an ancient god, or it came from space. I don't think the origins of where it came from really matters. The point is, like, this is the thing that started everything, and it's still, it's like a parasite, you know, that kind of latches onto you, that latched onto this Eldian, or this human, and created the Titan madness to begin with. And there's, like, a narrative implication here that it's just, like, this symbolism of power, like, giving power to somebody and what happens when they are given that power and what the consequences are of accepting that power. And so, like, I don't think it's supposed to be, like, a thinking, feeling thing. I think it's just supposed to be this drive. Like, it's just going on instinct. It's not really a... It's not really a, a sentient being of some sort. I think it's just sort of like a representation of power. Anyway, everyone gets turned into Titans, even freaking Connie and Jean and Gabby, which is crazy. That was awesome to see and kind of scary as to wondering what's going to actually happen. The key might be actually, like, destroying the, um, the tentacle creature 
Ingram that might be the key to kind of erasing the Titan line. I'm not really sure. But I love Reiner just kind of going up against it and then going up the entire army of Titans too. And then, of course... My boy Reiner just getting hit in the face once again. Reiner just, he is the punching bag of Attack on Titan, and I love him to death, but my god, dude, <laughs> he gets beat up so often. I feel it. And then we have this confrontation. This was awesome. You have Armin in his Colossal Titan form, Eren in a similar form, and Armin finally standing up for him. Armin has gone through so much shit from being the sort of scared, insecure person that he was in the beginning, to actually see him single-handedly going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aaron here, his best friend, which, of course, you know, that's a whole nother, like, level of psychological damage on poor Armin here that he has to wind up doing this, and then also actually being able to stand up for himself without anybody by his side, and just one-on-one -on -one just going fisticuffs against Aaron. I think that's, that is awesome. This is what I was waiting to see. I was waiting to see the clash between Armin and Aaron, and I actually got to see it in like a Colossal Titan Kaiju battle form. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Now, the big elephant in the room is sort of the vision that Mikasa gets in this chapter, and I'm not going to pretend like I understand it, but I'm just going to tell you how I interpreted it. Um, so, to me, what I think is happening here is that um, Aaron, uh, when he got his visions of everything that was going to happen, I feel like he got not just what was going to happen, but every possible outcome of what could happen. Um, so I feel like this is the alternative reality of what could have happened if Aaron decided not to um, go attack Marley the way that he did and instead just sort of waited things out and just waited to see what would happen. And you guys um, are right that there is not going to be peace if they just left it alone also. Marley would actually wind up attacking Paradis and things would go to shit just as uh, in a similar fashion. But the thing is, is like, the thing that Attack on Titan to me um, has always been about is about this lack of communication between human beings and between different cultures and different uh, ways of life, different, different nations and everything. And this idea that like, we are all the same, even sort of like the symbolism of like the LD, like we're all Titan, they're all Titans technically, right? They thought they were fighting against the titans and to realize they have the bloodline that they can become titans and so like we all are the same we all have like similarities but there's this sort of um vilification between each other that we have and this sort of lust for power as well in that there's always going to be war and there's always going to be people sort of trying to take something from somebody else or subjugate somebody else and it's this back and forth battle that'll never end um, so you can have this momentary peace here that we're seeing in this flashback or, or this alternate reality, but it is something that's not going to last. And so this is what Aaron probably saw as a potential outcome and then decided that it wasn't good enough and that eventually, you know, pain would come to Paradis again. And so he decided to enact his genocide and take just, just take everybody out, right? And then with that, you know, becoming the villain, like allowing himself to become the the villain of the story and allowing them to kind of team up to take him out and basically sort of uh, enacting this like self-sacrifice in a way, even though he's killing like thousands of other people. So it's not it's not just a self-sacrifice, but it's uh, it's sort of like he's allowing himself to be the villain in order to allow his friends and everyone else to have the freedom to do something about it. To allow them not just to team up, and not that that's just going to create a magical peace that's going to last forever, but um, it's unifying people under a singular goal of stop the enemy. And that's that's kind of what Attack on Titan has always shown, is that there is an enemy, it must be destroyed. Whether it's the Titans, or the Marlians, or the founding Titan of Eren, uh, you know, it, people work best together when they have an enemy, when they have something to face. When people don't have something to face down, they're kind of lost, you know, and they fight each other. But there's this sort of unification that comes with a common enemy, and it's, uh, it's a crazy thing. And so, like, Eren, I feel like, became that self-sacrificial villain in order to achieve this and uh, there was another side to it there was another side where he could have had a moment of peace where he could have lived with Mikasa they could have ran away together but that outcome was not good enough that outcome was not protective enough of everything 
that he cared about. And so like, and so in a way, I feel like he gave up this opportunity. He gave up this piece that he could have had in order to make himself into that villain. And then anyways, that's just my interpretation of it. And then my interpretation of uh, this page as well, when Aaron says, you know, after I'm gone, forget about me and be free. And I feel like that's another reason why Aaron was so adamant about telling Mikasa, I hate you. I've always hated you because I feel like Aaron was trying to distance Mikasa from him. Like, get away from me. I'm going to become the bad guy. Like, you do, don't do mourn for me. Don't feel bad about this don't feel bad for about what we could have had just forget about me and again i think another theme of attack on titan of the entire series in general is this sort of manipulation of history and this manipulation of what people remember and understand even the founding titan's ability to wipe everyone's memories when you take the memories away when you take away history and when you take away the bad things that have happened it leads to the same things happening over and over and over again history is doomed to repeat itself if you don't learn from it and so the founding titan took everything away and look the same shit happened over and over again and so like i feel like Aaron saying this and Mikasa saying that she won't forget him is basically her saying that like no this was part of what happened this is part of life this is part of the war this was part of the titan lineage this was part of my life that you made such a powerful impactive uh, uh important you know you were such an important part of it that I will not forget you it doesn't matter what you became I won't forget who you were and I think that's kind of the strong, powerful moment of it. And that's what prompts Mikasa to put the scarf back on. She's able to separate it in her mind, as in, Aaron is somebody who I love that I'm never going to forget. And even though, you know, he's reached this point where he's like, I mean, it's like you have to put him out of his misery at this point. And even when you watch the scene or read the scene, when she goes into his mouth, which by the way, this panel, I love this shot. This is an amazing shot. This this might be one of my favorite panels in the entire uh, in the entire manga, honestly. But again, when she goes to attack him, Aaron looks at her, he's he's accepted his fate. Like, look at his face. He's not happy about what he's doing. Like, when he's committing the genocide, when he's destroying everything, when he's, you know, stomping on all of human life that there is, there's no enjoyment in it. He's not having fun with it. He's not thinking, yes, this is it. He's just thinking, this is what I had to do. Like, he he absolutely believed this was the only possible option to, to save everybody else. And he realizes that he has become the villain. He realizes realizes that he had become his friend's enemy there's no joy in it the, the, the joy has been sucked out of him he's a lifeless looking creature at this point he's not human any like he's literally just a dangling face you know uh, <laughs> attached to this like spinal thing inside of a giant creature like he's his humanity ripped away from him by his own design and uh, and you see that in his eyes and it's just such a powerful image to me because it's not like Aaron's not jumping for joy with what he's doing he's just accepting it and he's accepting that his friends are unable to do whatever they want to as far as their freedom goes which means in part stopping him so it's not that he wants to be stopped I've said this before it's that he doesn't care either way as long as they're free as long as they are making their own choices and doing what they want to do uh, if that means killing him then that means killing him it doesn't matter and Mikasa you know saying see you later and everything uh, and then, and then the final shot of, of geez, I mean, this freaking, I mean, Isayama's artwork, he definitely went the full nine on this last final panel here, because this, this is absolutely incredible, um, being able to show that and show that, you know, she still cares about everything that Aaron was before this. All right. Now I'm coming at this from a character perspective, you know, and that's how I always look at stories. And I, I look at things through what does this mean for the characters and what does this mean for the themes of the story so and i feel like everything this chapter did really fit all of that i thought it fit it very very well now the only other thing here is ymir in the background giving kind of a creepy ass smile And again, this is just wild fan speculation. I got nothing to back this up on. I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. Um, not written down or anything. This is just off the top of my head. But there was an image of Ymir seeing a, a couple of kiss at one point in the flashback. And then Ymir's relationship with the king was a very unloving one. The king was using her for her power and everything. He didn't really care about her. She was a slave of some sort. So I feel like Ymir seeing this actual sort of love 
in front of her, even though it ended in a murder. Ymir is seeing somebody that didn't hate him in the end. Ymir is seeing somebody that didn't use him. Ymir is seeing somebody that really spent her life as his supporter. And it's, uh, it's you know, one of the reasons that Mikasa was always one of my favorite characters is because, because she has this ultimate sense of loyalty to her and her, this admiration for somebody that saved her as a child, you know? And so, in a way, she's saving him as well. She's, I know it's it's kind of fucked up, but it's like putting somebody out of their misery, it's it's saving them in a way. Because what else was there for Eren? If he, de if he destroys everybody, then what? then he's got to live with that or or what like what do you do with Aaron after that you know there is no other place for him to go there's no redemption arc for him now the only other thing I can think of is that perhaps Ymir is connected to the tentacle squid creature in some way my theory is that Ymir is going to be reincarnated as Historia's child and then that sort of ends the Titan line and gives her a chance to kind of live with somebody that actually loved her and cared about her and actually be able to grow up as a as a real functioning person but I don't really know Anyways, um, so I don't really know where the story is going to go as far as the final chapter is concerned. I know that there's a lot of things to wrap up here. We got to see what's going to happen with the worm creature. We got to see what's going to happen with the Titan line and lineage and what's going to happen between the Marleans and Paradis. I, I don't think that like an ultimate like we're all happy together. Let's all sing Kumbaya. I don't really think that that's going to happen um, because we got we do have to be realistic and Attack on Titan has always kind of shown that like things are very gray there is no black and white there isn't really like good guys and bad guys when it comes to things like this when it comes to the world and war and conquering and stuff it's just who has more power but anyways i love this chapter uh these are the reasons why i loved it I, I don't know if that worked for everybody but it worked for me anyways guys let me know what you thought about chapter 138 down in the comments below let's have a discussion about it uh let's be nice let's hear each other's points of view let's do what the marleans and the people of paradise did not and let's communicate together and let's understand why people liked or didn't like this chapter so comment all your thoughts down below everyone's opinion is valid and uh, thank you for watching this video, guys. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with other Attack on Titan fans. Check the links in the description for my Discord, Patreon, and Instagram, and all that fun junk. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the final chapter. Damn.